Then round its helmet head, talking about Boris Johnson and how he must be removed from Parliament and power as soon as possible. So, in the last few days we have seen, we have entered completely uncharted territory. First, there was the Supreme Court's ruling that Boris Johnson had acted unlawfully when he shut down Westminster for five weeks. Four days, not five weeks, however. Of course, it had been patently obvious to everyone that his claims that he needed to shut down Parliament in order to work on his legislative programme were complete rubbish. The only thing he wanted to shut down was any attempt to scrutinise his Brexit plans. Oh, is that so? I love how you've changed your story completely because if everybody can recall, she was hell-bent and very adamant that the reason that Boris Johnson was intending to shut down Parliament to begin with was to force for a no-deal Brexit. Mm, short memory. Shutting down Parliament in order to force through a no-deal Brexit which will do untold and lasting damage to the country. See? <laughs> but now, of course, she knows the scoop. She had prior knowledge. Or she just expects her readers and her hangers-on to not remember what she said a month ago. Of course, Helmet Head always knew. Yeah, they all knew. It's to prevent scrutiny. What fucking scrutiny? None of them have scrutinised anything. They pretended that they had thwarted Boris Johnson's secret plan to shoehorn through a no-deal Brexit, then used that as justification to pass their Ben Bill. And now, as Beta Blackford announced to the world yesterday, the Ben Bill was an attempt to stop Brexit completely, but yet they used the prevention of no deal as their excuse to get it passed. It's funny how the goalposts continuously shift with you wankers, but yet you manage to paint this wonderful picture that you're progressive and inclusive and the best thing for the United Kingdom as well as <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> Drag back to Parliament to explain himself. Oh, drag back to explain himself. Oh, tail between the legs. Rather than apologise or show any contrition, he instead blamed everybody else, as did everybody in the public. And using some of the worst language I've ever heard spoken by any politician. And when one MP pleaded with him to tone down his inflammatory language, reminding him of the appalling murder of MP Joe Cox, this is just complete and utter bullshit being typed out here. And yet this woman has a mass following in this country and wanders about with that fucking bull cut as if she's some demigog in that segment. The woman in question threw Joe Cox into the equation as a means to suggest that the death threat she's been receiving were in part down to Boris Johnson's language. Of course, Helmet Head has to dress it up as, oh, they pleaded with him to tone down his language, and they just reminded him of the appalling murder of Joe Cox. Oh, but just a, just a reminder. Why the fuck did they bring it up to begin with? Anyway, politicians especially, oh no, sorry, I missed this bit. He described her comments as humbug. No, what I just explained two seconds ago was what he referred to as humbug. Anyway, politicians, especially in leadership roles, must strive to act respectfully in everything we do. Oh, is that so, Helmet Head? Well, explain to me then why Mary Block refers to multiple people, multiple politicians as far right. You yourself have called Boris Johnson a racist and a dictator. Beta Blackford has done the exact same thing, starting in Parliament on several occasions, calling Boris Johnson a dictator, a racist, and so on and so forth. Forth. And of course, you yourself love to refer to everybody that isn't on board with the rainbow unicorn land utopia that you've got planned for us as hateful far right. You even call Tory MPs that want Brexit because, God forbid, any MP has the audacity to follow through with a referendum, you know. Uh, you refer to them as Brextremists. You know, I could sit here all day and talk about inflammatory language that I've seen come from your camp, but of course, that will never get a mention here. Oh, no, 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 no. It's all rainbows and unicorns where helmet head's concerned. After an act of parliament was passed earlier this month, the PM is expected to re legally write to the EU seeking an extension to the deadline so we don't crash out <laughs> without a deal at the end of this month. But Frankly, we are running out of time. And what skin is it off your nose exactly? As I thought we were going to have this miraculous referendum and sail off back into the European Union to live with the European family of nations. Our proposal relies on MPs from across the spectrum working together for the good of all nations, the good of all nations. 
So it's a reason may completely railroads us into a corner in regards to Brexit with her shambolic attempts at so-called negotiations and rendering us with one viable option that would be to leave without a deal at that point unless of course we and you people have decided to try your damnedest to ensure that no deal cannot occur using all of the fear porn and hysteria histrionics etc that you can obtain to justify your actions failing to remember with your short memory that you were seeing the exact same things years ago and it's just as time has progressed that things have emerged to solidify your case including Theresa May's inaction. A clear indication of double standards from Helmet Head here as they see no issue whatsoever with a unelected temporary Prime Minister sitting in but they had a hell of an issue with Boris Johnson being unelected apparently. This technocratic government would only be in place for a few days, long enough to send the formal request to extend the Brexit deadline. It would then dissolve itself and make way for a general election, giving the people of the UK the opportunity, all the opportunity that you remove from them by removing no deal from the equation and asking for an extension, even though the majority of the public at this point, including a lot of people that voted to remain, want to fucking leave. But it's good of them, they're going to give people an opportunity, the opportunity that they stole from them twice over by refusing a general election up until this point. Potential candidate could be the Communist Prime Minister Jeremy Corbyn. I'm certainly no fan of the Labour leader, of course you're going to say that because you received pushback. I'm not pushing for him to fulfil this role but matters are so serious that we don't have the luxury of ruling our options. However, there are plenty other potential candidates for caretaker PM. But to repeat, we're running out of time. And Helmet Head's membership is at stake here. Remember that, folks. Remember that. The one thing to take away from this all is that Nicola fucking Sturgeon is getting a bit jittery that her EU membership is in jeopardy. <laughs> Once the threat of crashing out of the EU has been averted, I would absolutely relish an election. The chance to put our case to the people. Our case? It would allow us to make the case once again to protect Scotland's place in Europe and give the people of Scotland the right to choose independence. Quote unquote. Taking a step back from this seemingly endless Westminster mess, Scotland deserves better than this. We didn't vote for any of it. Brexit or not, we should not be subject to the whim of chaotic and dangerous Tory governments. No wonder more and more people are seeing independence as the best option for Scotland's future. It's not so. You know, this is unbelievable. So you're trying to stop Brexit under the pretense of preventing no deal, as per usual, which if successful delays Brexit, obviously, meaning the United Kingdom would in effect be stuck in Europe. And of course, not only that, but it would in turn grant the European Union the power on top of this to decide how long any delay or extension would last for, effectively leaving us in Europe for as long as they want. So after you've ensured that the UK is shackled to the EU for the foreseeable, you then want to present your fucking case for staying in Europe. And I do have to ask, if we play this hypothetical out a little bit, what would be the point exactly in stating your case for remaining in Europe? As if the previous points up until this point had been successful, you'd have ensured that we were stuck within Europe anyway. If the referendum was lost, it wouldn't really matter in a sense, would it? Because the previous steps up until this point would have ensured that the European Union dictates how long we remain part of Europe for, which could in turn mean forever that the referendum swung in favour of leaving the UK under this pretense of independence even though it's really not independence why don't you call it interdependence or why don't you call it a sellout referendum or something along those lines because that's what you intend to do but let's say that leave one and this time round we're out of the UK and we're out of the EU all those jobs that you claim would be lost under a no deal Brexit, they're out the window because we've left the European Union anyway. And you can sit there and talk about some random Polish politician 
as a means to provide clear-cut evidence that we'd be allowed in straight away. You don't know how long that process would take, but don't let that distract you from the fact that that would be what they intend to do. It would be to get independence from the UK in order to then go back into Europe. So it's got nothing at all to do with independence. No matter how much they try to dress it up, no matter how much they try to fan the flames for independence, bang the independence drum, exploit nationalism and exploit patriotism, even though they have fucking disdain for the both of them. But if it means that they can dupe the public one last time, then so be it, I presume. You know, this shrieking bull cut cries in Hollywood for a right to determine our future, or Scotland should have a right to determine its own future, etc, etc. Yet, we have no right to have a referendum in order to choose our own future, unless, of course, the criteria for said referendum were in fact met. The, the criteria in your mandate that specifies circumstantial changes, the criteria in the mandate that specifies leave, leaving the European Union, or in your own words, dragged out against our will. <laughs> but the actions that are being taken, and that these people intend to take, clearly deviate further and further from any of those circumstantial changes occurring. If anything, they've shackled us into Europe against our will, if you're looking at it from the perspective of people that voted to leave. Which, uh, hate to break it to your helmet head, was the majority of the people within the UK.